20 years ago I rewired this motor from 120 volts to 240 volts for my old table saw and now I want to wire it back to 120 volts. Now the best way to change the voltage on these motors is to follow the wiring diagram. Hmm, no wiring diagram. The way these dual voltage motors work is you have two 120 volt coils in series and together those get up to 240 volts. Now if you want to run the motor at 120 volts you basically have 120 volts coming in here and you take this coil and rather than having it go here that goes here and that connects here so effectively you have the 220 volt coils in parallel but it's actually more complicated than that because this is a single phase induction motor and it has a starter winding in series with a starting capacitor and a starting switch and that is only turned on when the motor is starting so all these three things are actually part of one thing in the motor and there's one wire that comes out to here an extra wire here and another wire here which is why we have two things with three wires on them and one with just one wire on them so now what we need to do is we need to connect the 120 volts here and how do you know which one this one is? easy enough because it's the one of the three that doesn't have one side of the power coming in basically it's the three wires connected together without having either side of the power cord and then we need to open this up here and connect that down here and this connects to here which puts these two windings in parallel what's very important is we must not reverse this winding because if we do we're going to blow the breaker very quickly and why does it work this way? well this starter circuit here is a 120 volt circuit and the reason it's 120 volts is if we're running the motor at 120 volts we don't have any more available than that but if we're running the motor at 240 volts it's using these two coils inside the motor actually as an auto transformer to make the 120 volt from the 240 volts and you might say but isn't that going to throw these two coils out of balance? not really because inside the motors these two coils are actually right on top of each other so the motor acts very much like a transformer so now in the motor the one thing we need to figure out is as we break this apart which one goes to this coil and which one goes to the other ones well that's also easy enough because this one coil here is the one that goes only to the two connections so when we break when we open this up here whichever one connects to here that's the one that we need to break and the other two stay together <laughs> Now I just realized something 20 years ago I moved where the starting cap was and that covered up the label and on here I've got the wiring diagrams so I can check my work. The diagram says T1, T3 and H should go together and there's T3 hard to find this is T8 and that says T1 on here so I got that right and this wire is really frayed so I need to actually also replace the power cord so I've got the motor mounted on the saw again plugged into here saw is plugged in the wall the main advantage of running a motor at 240 volts instead of 120 volts is there's less losses in the wiring because it only uses half the current but at twice the voltage and so when it's loaded heavily it has a little bit more oomph that way especially when it starts I dug up some old footage of when I still had the saw wired at 240 volts in my old shop and surprisingly it actually starts a quarter second faster at 240 volts and it probably has a bit more power but it won't make that much difference on this saw because the belt actually slips before the motor stalls out <laughs> 